Hello everyone! Welcome to our educational video. So I am Ms. Janbea Garcinas and together with my partners, Ms. Ken Sahuga, Ms. Honey Joy Magnaong, Ms. Janeline Ortaleza, and Mr. Ryan Bantazal. So we will be having our virtual discussion regarding the topic about Chapter 21, which is Second Homecoming and Second Travel Abroad. We hope that you will learn something out from this video. So what are we waiting for? Let's start! So hi everyone, it's me again, Ms. Janbea Garcinas, your first reporter. So before I will give you the full information on my assigned topic, I will give you first the overview and my um, chosen topic. So as an introduction, we all know that Rizal was acknowledged leader of Illustrado movement of Filipinos in Europe. Write that we're lobbying for reforms in the Philippines in 1885. He decided to return to the Philippines, though his friends and supporters were anonymous in urging him not to go as he would surely be arrested. So just enjoy this virtual discussion and um, I hope that you will learn something out from this video. So on the screen, as you can see, the second homecoming of Rizal. So on August 1887, it was Rizal's first homecoming from abroad. On May 1892, there were certain reasons as why Jose Rizal would again return to his fatherland, which is the Philippines. He decided to go home with his following reasons. First is to have a conference with Governor Dispujo regarding his proposal on the Borneo colonization. Secondly is to establish the La Liga Filipina in the Philippines. The last one is to prove to his eclectic traitors, particularly Eduardo Dilet, that the latter was wrong in accusing result of cowardliness and unbravely characteristics. It was also said that they let the attack in Rizal was comfortable and safe in Hong Kong, that he already abandoned the country's coso. So these are the reasons why really Dr. Jose Rizal want to return in our country. So another information about the second homecoming of Rizal is on June 1892. Rizal's bold return to Manila, Philippines. And it is also the date of his second homecoming. It marked his re-entry into the hazardous campaign for reforms. He firmly believed that the fight for Filipino liberties had assumed a new face. It must be fought in the Philippines and not in Spain. The battlefield is in the Philippines. There is where we should meet. There we will help another. There together we will suffer or triumph perhaps. This is what he told to his countrymen in Europe. Two months later, on December 31, 1891, he reiterated this belief in a letter to Blumentritt. I believe that La Solidaridad is no longer our battlefield. Now it is a new struggle. The fight is no longer in Madrid. In going home to lead a new reform movement, he was like the biblical Daniel burning the Spanish lion in its own den. So another one is that arrival in Manila with sister. So Dr. Jose Rizal arrived in Manila on June 26, 1892 at noon with his widowed sister Lucia, the wife of the late Mariano Herbosa, a meticulous diarist. So next is Rizal described his second homecoming in Manila, Philippines. So according to him, I arrived at Manila on June 26, 1892, Sunday at 12 o'clock noon. I was met by many carabineers headed by a major. There were in addition one captain and one sergeant of the veteran civil guard. I came down with my luggage and they inspected me at the custom house. From there, I went to Hotel de Oriente where I occupied num room number 22 facing the church of Binondo. So that's how he said and we can see it was very detailed when he really arrived in the Manila, Philippines. After that, in the afternoon at 4 o'clock, he went to Malacanang Palace to seek audience with the Spanish Governor General, General Eulogio Dispujol and Conde de Caspi. He was told to come back at that night night at 7 o'clock, promptly at 7 p.m. He returned to Malacanang and was able to confer with Governor General Dispujol, who agreed to pardon his father, but not the rest of his family, and told him to return on Wednesday, June 29. After his brief interview with the Governor General, he visited his sisters in the city, first Narcisa, which is Sisa, wife of Antonio Lopez, and later Neneng, which is Saturnina, wife of Manuel T. Hidalgo. So next is Rizal visiting friends in central Luzon. At 6 o'clock p.m. of the following day, June 27, Rizal boarded a train in Tutuban Station and visited his friends in Malolos, Bulacan, San Fernando, Pampanga, Tarlac, Tarlac, and Bacolor, Pampanga. He was welcomed and lavishly entertained at the homes of his friends. These friends were good patriots, 
who were the supporters in the reform crusade, and he took the opportunity to greet them personally and discuss the problems affecting their people. Rizal returned by train to Manila on the next day, June 28 at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Whether he knew it or not, he was shadowed by government spies who watched carefully his every movement. The homes he had visited were raided by Guardia Civil, which seized some copies of the Noli and Fili and some subversive pamphlets. After Rizal's visit to his friends in central Luzon, he had other interviews with Governor General Dispujol. These interviews were vividly recorded in his diary as follows. On Wednesday, June 29 at 7.30, I saw His Excellency. I did not succeed to have the penalty of exile lifted, but it gave me hope with regard to my sisters. As it was the feast of St. Peter and St. Paul, our interview ended at 9.15. I was to come again the following day at 7.30. The following day, Thursday, June 30, we talked about the question of Borneo. The general was opposed to it, very much opposed. He told me to come back Sunday. On Sunday, July 3, I returned. We talked about sundry things and I thanked him for having lifted the exile of my sisters. I told him that my father and brother would arrive on the first boat. He asked me if I would like to go abroad to Hong Kong. I told him yes. He told me to return on Wednesday. So from that discussion, we've seen the second homecoming of Dr. Jose Rizal was a really dangerous for him. He already knew that if he will come back to his country land, his life would become more danger. But because of his purpose, because of his goal to build an association and to make his name clear, then he did that. And that's returning to his land, which is the Philippines. Good day everyone, my name is Kento Sahoga and I will be the next reporter of this group. Founding of the Liga Filipina July 3, 1892, Sunday evening, following his morning interview with Governor General Dispujol, Rizal attended a meeting of the Patriots at the home of Chinese Filipino mestizo Doroteo Onjonko on Ayala Street, Tondo, Manila. Rizal explained the objectives of the Liga Filipina a civic league of Filipinos which he desired to establish and its role in socio-economic life of the people. The Patriots were favorably impressed and gladly approved the establishment of the Liga. The main purpose of the Liga Filipina was to build a new group that sought to involve the people directly in the reform movement. It aims to unite the whole country and to have a common goal to defend every Filipino citizen against the cruel treatment of the Spaniards. The officers of the new league were elected as follows. Jose Rizal is the founder, Ambrosio Salvador is the president, Agustin de la Rosa is the fiscal, Bonifacio Arevalo is the treasurer, and Giudato Arellano is the secretary. Constitution of the Liga These are the aims of Liga Filipina. First, to unite the whole archipelago into one compact and homogeneous body. Second, Mutual protection in every want and necessity. Third, defense against all violence and injustice. Fourth, encouragement of the education, agriculture, and commerce. And lastly, study and application reforms. This is the motto of Liga Filipina, Unos Estar Omnium, or One Like All. The duties of Liga members are as follow, as you can see in your screen. The people are directly involved in the reform movement through cooperation and the establishment of cooperatives. It provides Filipinos basic services such as education, health, legal aid, livelihood, financial support, and scholarship grants. Rizal arrested and jailed in Fort Santiago. July 6, 1892, Wednesday, Rizal went to Malacanang Palace to resume his series of interview with Governor General. During this interview, Governor General Despojol suddenly showed him some printed leaflets which were found in Lucia's pillowcase. These incrementary leaflets were entitled Pobres Friars or Poor Friars. It is a satire against the rich Dominican friars who amazed fabulous riches contrary to their monastic vow of poverty. He was placed under arrest and escorted to Fort Santiago by Ramon Despujol, the nephew and aide of Governor General. In Fort Santiago, he was kept in commando, as he related to his diary. The following day, July 7, the Garceta de Manila published the story of Rizal's arrest, which produced indignant commotion among the Filipino people. 
particularly the member of the newly organized Liga Filipina. Hello, this is the continuation of Sahulga's report. I'm Ryan S. Bentazal and the topic that I'm going to discuss is the results are arbitrary deported to the Pitan. On July 7, 1892, Gaceta de Manila published the study of results arrest the same Asia gubernatorial decree have him the reasons to, for results deportation as follows. The first reason, Rizal had published books and articles abroad which showed disloyalty to Spain and which were frankly anti-Catholic and imprudently anti-friar. Second, a few hours after his arrival in Manila, there was found in his packages a bundle of handbells entitled Pobrest Frailes. Third, his novel El Filibusterismo was dedicated to the memory of the three traitors. The last reason, the end of which he pursues in his efforts and writings, is to turn from the loyal Filipinos' breast the three shores of our Catholic faith. On July 15, 1892, Rizal was brought under heavy guard to the steamer Cebu which was sailing for the Pitan. This steamer under Captain Delgras sailing south passing Mindori and Panay. On July 17, 1892, they reached the Pitan at 7 in the evening. After that, Captain Delgras handed Rizal to Captain Ricardo Carnicero, a Spanish of the Pitan. The same night, July 17, 1892, Rizal began his exile in Launi de Pitan which could last until July 31, 1896, a period of four years. And that is the experiences of Rizal deported to the Pitan.